Dan Ives just called Nvidia selling to China a watershed moment, and Gene Munster explained why the stock is trading at a massive discount. This is a super juicy one. Stay tuned for both clips. Dan Ives, it's good to have you here. Great um, to be here. How significant is this? It's a watershed moment if it plays out, and I believe it will. Look, I mean, our whole view is you don't want to give Huawei and China tech more power. By, by taking NVIDIA out of that market, that's what they've done. And what that you're talking about, what, could be 15, 20 million a year. And I think this shows, and we've seen it being in D.C. a bunch the last few months. I mean, mm. you're seeing changing winds there. I mean, there's a recognition that you have to give NVIDIA that market. You have to let that open because otherwise China tech gets an advantage. And for the first time in 30 years, U.S. tech is ahead of China. Well, well first of all, you call it a watershed moment. The stock's up 1%. I mean, mm -hmm. really? Watershed? Yeah. Stock's up 1%. If it was such a watershed moment, wouldn't the stock be up more than 1%? No, I mean, look, I view it as as we go into the coming weeks, we're going to look at this as more and more China opens up. I th even as you know, Trump's going to do the visit there in April, I think this is more the tea leaves. Because I view it, this is just the start of what's going to be an opening of that relationship. And I think I expect more and more. NVIDIA is going to be able to sell into that market. And that's not baked in. I mean, if you start to think about from a street perspective, the view is China, very, very cautious. I'd say negative in terms of what that's going to ultimately be. I'd say the street's underreacting to what I believe is really going to be an opening up mm -hmm. of what's going to be a golden opportunity I mean, for NVIDIA. Christina laid it out, though. It's, it's you know, China could very well be like, Thanks, but no thanks. I mean, the, the, the market seems like it's not willing to take a, a, a big leap forward because there are many things that are still at play. Yeah, not I, to mention the fact sure. that these are, what, eight, already like 18-month-old outdated chips from the highest quality ones that NVIDIA produces anyway. And still, I think, one to two years ahead of where Huawei is. So in my view, just you know, being in Asia for three weeks, you go to any China big tech company, whatever they, they, they say publicly, at the end of the day, they want NVIDIA chips. They, there's only one chip fueling the AI revolution. I think this just signifies cool relations. And I think obviously a lot more positive between U.S. and China. That's bullish for big tech. It's bullish for you. It's bullish for AMD and others. OK, so let me ask you this. Would you admit that we have started to see some dispersion? among the hyperscalers and among the mega caps on how the stocks are trading and how each one individually is now being viewed mm -hmm. rather than a, a monolith. Would, would you yeah. would you admit that? Yeah, okay. De and, and I, I definitely. Okay, so you, you would. Um, so I'm wondering at some point, can you have an outperform on an Apple, on an Amazon, on a Meta, on a Microsoft, and on an Alphabet? You're judging all of them equal when telling me that this dispersion that we've witnessed is legit, it's real, and it may continue to be the case. How, yeah, how would you come back with that? Sure. What I'd say is that when it's the sixth, seventh inning of this AI revolution, they, then you could, you're going to have to separate out and there's going to be clear winners and losers. Where we are today, I said it's top of the third one out relative to this AI game. And when I look at the consumer AI revolution, it speaks to our Apple and increased price, it hasn't even started. So when I look at where Meta and what we see with Alphabet, what we see with Apple, I think that's just starting. Now, I think you will see the market ultimately just like Microsoft right now and Oracle almost mm -hmm. putting in the penalty box. But I think that's the wrong way to view that. And I think you could pound the table or be much more bullish on certain mega caps versus others. And that's how we've tried to sort of characterize, you know, what are the sort of the A, the B, the C group. Taking a video out of China gave Huawei and China Tech more power. This could be a massive revenue boost per year for NVIDIA. When you ban American companies from competing in China, you're helping Chinese companies. You're giving them a protected market where they don't face competition from the best companies in the world. Huawei makes AI chips. They're working hard to catch NVIDIA. When NVIDIA can't sell them in China, Huawei has the entire Chinese market to themselves. Chinese companies that need AI chips have no choice. They must buy from Huawei or other Chinese suppliers. Those sales give Huawei revenue. That revenue funds R&D. That R&D helps them improve their chips. Every quarter that NVIDIA is banned from China is a quarter where Huawei gets stronger. They're learning, they're iterating, they're building scale. They're developing their technology without facing the best competitor in the world. 
That exact move is helping China build indigenous alternatives. Market access is a competitive advantage. When you're ahead technologically, you want to compete everywhere. You want to use that advantage while you have it. You don't want to waste your advantage. Not that it's Nvidia's fault. For years, people worried that China was catching up or pulling ahead in technology. Chinese companies were growing fast, they were investing heavily, and they were acquiring talent. The fear was that the US technological dominance would end, but American companies pulled ahead decisively on AI. The best models come from American companies, the best chips come from American companies, the best software frameworks come from American companies. The US has a clear technological lead, and that lead is an asset. Policy is shifting from containment to competition. Instead of trying to stop China from advancing, compete with them and win. Use America's advantages in technology, innovation, and execution to maintain leadership. Dan's view is that this is just the start. More opening will follow. The relationship will improve progressively. Access will increase gradually. That creates a runway for sustained growth in the Chinese market. Chinese companies saying one thing publicly while wanting something else privately is standard for geopolitically sensitive industries. Publicly, Chinese tech companies support domestic alternatives. They praise Huawei, they talk about technology independence, that's the politically acceptable position. Privately, they just want the best technology available. Engineers know which chips perform better, they know which software ecosystems are more developed, they know which companies provide better support. When they can choose based purely on technological merit, they choose Nvidia. The US has more to gain from competition than containment when it has technological advantages. Competition lets American companies generate revenue from the world's largest markets. It keeps them integrated in global supply chains. It gives them scale to fund continued innovation. It forces them to stay sharp by facing strong competitors. That's why Dan sees this as such a big strategic shift. But Gene Munster has a different take on what this means for NVIDIA's valuation. Welcome to Pressure Points. This is a deja vu episode. The topic is the White House gives the green light for NVIDIA to sell the H20 lower power chips to China. Uh, the reason why deja vu, of course, is that we talked about this in the middle of July and then some of the trade negotiations. It was on again, off again, but here we are on again. As far as what the stock's reacting to, the news rumored kind of broke around one o'clock Eastern time. If you take where the stock was just before the rumor broke to where it was after President Trump confirmed this on social media after the market closed, it's up about 5%. Uh, it was up about 4% back in July when the news came out. So kind of a similar reaction to what we saw a few months ago. The news specifically is that they'll be able to sell the H20 chips again. That's uh, point number one. Point number two, there's going to be a 25% tax, essentially a tariff on Chinese customers for these chips. And then uh, the third piece to consider is what was the revenue per quarter of these chips before they ended up getting blocked? And then we had to go back and look in the spring. And the April quarter was about seven and a half billion in revenue. So we can have some context to if you assume that seven and a half billion is kind of a standard number and doesn't grow uh, because you know it's going to be the products are going to be twenty five percent more expensive. That would add thirty billion essentially to Nvidia's total revenue for calendar twenty six. So we'll jump into the pressure point. What does that mean? What does that thirty billion in revenue mean for the numbers? It takes the growth rate from fifty one percent to the mid sixties, sixty six to be exact, and so. It is a meaningful step up. I think the up 5% in the after hours, well, you have a growth rate going up, I think more than uh, what that 5% justifies, is I think representative of, of still investors uh, that this is not for real, that something could change and understandably so, things have changed. And so it's really hard to get a ton of confidence for many investors around you know, what is the true growth for NVIDIA? What's it going to look like in calendar 26 and calendar 27? That concern plays itself out in the multiple. It trades at 23 times next year's earnings. And that compares to the rest of the MAG7, excluding Tesla, which has a higher multiple. It trades at 28 times next year's earnings. And so you've got a discount, 23 versus 28. But not only is there a discount, the growth rates, I mentioned that mid 60% likely growth for, for calendar 25, probably even higher than that as they go through the year for calendar 26 for NVIDIA. 
you know, that compares to about a 12% growth for uh, the MAG-7, the rest of the MAG-7. And so if you look at uh, the kind of a, a peg ratio on this, NVIDIA shares are most attractive. But of course, uh, that doesn't address the kind of underlying concern that what's going on in China may not be sustainable with the H20s and who knows how long this epic growth is going to continue when it comes to the hyperscalers and the bigger AI build out. So I just want to end with a quick thought on the growth rate and kind of how I believe that this is going to play out. And I still am in the camp that we're early in AI, early in the AI infrastructure build out. That may seem a little bit disconnected with reality given NVIDIA's business has gone from 25 billion a year, expected to be 350 billion next year. That was over a four year period. But I do believe that they, we are still early. I think that the infrastructure uh, investments will probably be at a higher than expected growth rate for the next two or three years. And so when I put this together, I think NVIDIA is in a great place to continue to exceed what will be increasingly high numbers. And I do think that the stock will be rewarded, not fully rewarded, because it will never shake that concern that we're two quarters away from the party ending that will not, that will always have a negative impact on the multiple. But I think that there is a, such a gap between the growth rate relative to the multiple today that shares of NVIDIA are most attractive here. Gene said NVIDIA trades at a lower multiple for next year's earnings compared to the rest of big tech. Gene says NVIDIA likely has growth in the mid 60s for the coming year. He also believes that we're still early in AI and early in the AI infrastructure build out. The market is essentially saying it doesn't believe NVIDIA's growth will continue. Investors are pricing in a slowdown. They're assuming the infrastructure build out will peak soon. They're expecting demand to normalize. They're anticipating margins to compress. Gene is arguing those assumptions are wrong. The infrastructure build out isn't peaking. It's still in early stages. The investments will continue at high rates for years. The demand is sustainable. The growth runway is longer than the market thinks. NVIDIA went from a relatively modest business to the largest tech company in the world in just a few years. Companies don't normally scale that fast. The human mind struggles to process it. When something grows that fast, the natural assumption is that it must slow down. Trees don't grow to the sky. What goes up must come down. All these mental models suggest that exceptional growth is temporary. Gene is arguing that AI infrastructure is different. The build out is genuinely in the early stages, despite the massive scale already achieved. The total infrastructure required is so large that years of continued growth are not only possible, but likely. The infrastructure investment timeline extends because AI is being deployed across the entire economy. Every company needs AI capabilities. Every industry is being transformed. That's a decade long transformation. Data centers need to be built. Power infrastructure needs to be upgraded. Networking equipment needs to be installed. Chips need to be manufactured and deployed. Software needs to be developed and integrated. All of this takes time and requires sustained investment. The hyperscalers are leading the investment, but they're not the only investors. Enterprises are building their own AI infrastructure. Governments are investing in AI capabilities. Research institutions are expanding AI resources. Cloud providers beyond the hyperscalers are building capacity. The investment is broad-based and sustained. Gene's conviction about building early comes from understanding the total scope of what needs to be built. The infrastructure deployed so far is substantial but it's a fraction of what's ultimately required. Companies have barely started transforming their operations with AI. Most workflows still run on traditional systems. Most processes haven't been redesigned for AI. The consumer AI revolution Gene mentions adds another growth driver. So far, AI has primarily impacted enterprises and developers. Consumer applications are just beginning. When AI becomes embodied in consumer devices and services, demand for infrastructure will likely increase dramatically because consumer scale is enormous. Hundreds of millions of people use AI daily, creating computer demand that dwarfs current infrastructure. Every query needs processing, every interaction needs compute, every personalization needs AI. Scale that across global consumer markets and the infrastructure requirements become staggering. When a company consistently beats expectations, the market eventually adjusts expectations higher. But as long as the company keeps exceeding those higher expectations, the pattern sustains. 
NVIDIA has been doing this consistently. Each quarter, analysts raise their forecasts. Each quarter, NVIDIA beats the new higher forecasts. The cycle repeats. That pattern builds credibility that management understands their business and their market better than outside observers. The risk is that the market is right to be worried. Maybe AI infrastructure spending will peak. Maybe competition will emerge. Maybe demand will normalize. Maybe margins will compress. Genius bedding, the fundamentals are right and fears are wrong. The infrastructure build out is real. The demand is sustainable. The competitive advantages are durable. The growth can continue for years. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And if you've been meaning to get a proper understanding of AI, I built a course that teaches everything from first principles to some more advanced ideas. I did this in a simple, approachable way. Once you join, you'll get lifetime access and pricing will go up each time we add new modules. So if you want in at the lowest price, now's that moment. Link in the description. Cheers. Picture this, a potential client searches for what your business offers and your YouTube video appears. Before they've even booked a call, they've built trust with you, turning them into a warm lead. That's why our clients are hitting $100,000 months because YouTube turns attention into authority. If you run a business, book a call and I'll show you exactly how to make this happen.